So let's uh, begin with our story. Basically, this is about zombies having taken over the world. So, you know, there is no way we can go to any supermarket to find food or we cannot go find medicine in pharmacies. There are no pharmacies available if you fall sick. There are no hospitals available and you have to survive. So you have to go search for food. You have to go search for medicines. And in the process of trying to find those things, in case we come across zombies, what can we do? We can either hide or we can fight them. There is no way to communicate. There is no smartphones available. So I think this forms an you know ideal setup for us to discuss topics of interest. So let's get on with this. So we'll correlate whatever we see with uh, our topics that we would like to discuss. So I see people sleeping. Oh, she's the main character we are going to explore this story with. Now she's waking up. So sleeping and waking up, I'll probably correlate with brain waves, electroencephalography waves. So when you're sleeping, it's like long wavelength and uh, it's called as delta waves. And the moment we wake up and uh, we are a bit groggy still, it has become shorter wavelength, but still uneven asynchronous waves called as alpha waves. So when we become alert, this alpha waves, it changes form. It is still shorter wavelength, but it is more even, more synchronous, and it is being called as beta waves. I'll try to refrain from talking when there is a conversation going, you know, so that we can follow the story. But sometimes the conversation is not so important, then I'll try to record over it. So he's talking about her dreaming and we were talking about beta waves. The interesting correlation that we can do over here is, uh, you know, beta waves is not only seen in an alert person. When we are sleeping, when you are dreaming, you know, it, uh, is also beta waves, so that it's practically indistinguishable between being an alert or whether we are dreaming. So we begin our exploration into this world of the last of us two. We begin with a snowy day. So a snowy day we can correlate with feeling sensation, feeling cold. Am I right? Sure, you don't want to do this when the sun's out? Maybe it's warmer? No. Can't wait. And you don't want to just tell me? I need to see it. Let's take a walk towards the gate. So, feeling cold is through sensory receptors on the skin. So, thermoreceptors perceive cold and warmth. But the interesting thing about cold is that. You know, it is perceived much faster than how we perceive warmth. So how do you compare the speed of which we perceive cold is you can compare it with perceiving pain. It is equal to that. So perceiving is through nerve signals. So how nerve signals get transmitted. So imagine a nerve membrane and there is sodium ions packed on one side of it and there is potassium ions packed on the other side of it. Once these get exchanged to the other side, a signal is conducted. So in order to this uh, exchange to occur, energy is required. Energy needs to be utilized in the form of adenosine triphosphate. What are you doing wandering around out here by yourself? I've been restless. You too? I feel like the farther south we go, the prettier it's gotten. You want to keep going? Just drive all the way to Mexico? I've thought about it. You can see Manny's hometown? <laughs> yeah, I don't see that living up to his stories. Yeah, no, probably not. So 
So energy is not only for feeling sensation, also you know any movements that we do is also you know energy is required for all the muscles to move, right? So new uh, nerves and muscles put together is neuromuscular coordination, an uh, important aspect. We have to maintain our balance that is through neuromuscular coordination and uh, not only for staying balanced. Any movement that we initiate, we uh, plan and we, uh, it, uh, all these movements have to occur in a smooth fashion, right? It cannot be in kind of like a spastic movement. So that is all depending on neuromuscular coordination. So for this energy that is required for all these things, we depend on food, carbohydrates, fat, protein, now all this food, 95% of it is getting converted to energy requirement. Keep going like this. We're going to be tired from today's trip. It's not that far. Hey, is Mel okay? She seemed out of it these past few days. She'll be fine. Have you stop being weird. You're freaking me out. I'm not being weird. Okay, so let's blindly follow him then. Pop. It's a waterfall. Cool. So energy production is happening when glucose enters the cell. It goes through a series of metabolic process, something called as glycolysis in the cytoplasm and then into the mitochondria for Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. And then it gets converted to adenosine triphosphate. Let's take a walk in this ice cold water towards the cliff. Okay, so energy conversion, if you keep first law of thermodynamics in mind, energy conversion from one form to the other, in the process of formation of ATP, about two-third of the energy is lost as heat. So we are walking in ice cold water and we want, we want heat to, you know, neutralize it. Uh, two-third of energy seems like an advantage. But I don't think it's advisable. What? No. I wish. Uh, I've had my pill. Thank you. So we are wearing insulating clothes because we have to stay warm. And especially for that, if we wet the clothes that we are wearing, I think that's not ideal because uh, you, heat loss is like 20 times more if we get wet. Can you go up over here? Okay, so is there any medication that we can take if we want to stay warm? There are some options like, you know, adrenergic drugs or dopaminergic drugs or anticholinergic or antihistamines. They have an effect of making us feel warm. You can do it, I can do it. Okay, so let's do this. Oh, that was a bad one. So I guess we are losing heat because our clothes are wet now. Probably I need time to take some medication. Yes. Good. I can all be as graceful as you. Okay then. What's that? What is that? You'll be fine. It's too high. Oh. Come on. That's really high. Okay, I hope he's not gonna push us down. Hey. Whoa. That was scary. Stop looking down. I'm sure the heart will be pounding right now. Owen, do we have to go back this way? Consider it an opportunity to work on your fingers. How about I work my foot up? Abby, stop flirting. <laughs> okay, so we are talking adrenergic, we are talking anticholinergic. And we just uh, started feeling our heart pounding. So that means it's time to, you know, what, what does uh, make sense of this? You know, what do you mean by adrenergic, cholinergic? We can correlate that with, say, autonomic nervous system that gets our heart pounding or probably slow down our heart. Cholinergic makes our heart go slow and adrenergic stimulation makes our heart go really fast. Not only that, uh, 
even you know uh, if you have to take a deep breath you need adrenal stimulation if you have to take shallow quick breaths i guess that's the cholinergic effect not only that you know going to the bathroom relieving ourselves or intestinal function digestion all this are a function of autonomic nervous system when a zombie is chasing you you don't want to go to the bathroom right so nice to autonomic nervous system Have you ever thought about when you are talking, the jaws moving? Jaws move up and down. It's a function of the elevator muscles and depressor muscles. There are three main elevator muscles that help close the jaw, and a single main depressor muscle to open the jaw. So figuring it out is also, you know, it's a function of autonomic nervous system. You know, cholinergic stimulation helps gain memory, and adrenergic stimulation helps us focus and concentrate. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure, they'll be happy to offer that information. They're searching for someone. Do you hear yourself? Okay, what do you want to do? So the opening and closing of jaws, collectively, it is called as muscles of mastication, basically muscles of chewing. That's pretty good. Well, okay, so mastication. Why do we have to have different different words to explain the same thing? We can just call it as muscles of chewing, right? It's not like there is. You only few words to learn in the medical textbook. I knew I couldn't count on you. Happy, I won't leave you in my dark. Not at any cost. Hey, don't. As I said, cholinergic stimulation helps us gain memory. So that's why you know cholinergic drugs are being used for Alzheimer's patients, and uh, in attention deficit children, adrenergic stimulation is sought after, and adrenergic drugs are given. Okay, so I guess uh, from now on we have to travel alone in this journey. It gets pretty exciting. Okay, don't just sign off yet. Let's recap what all topics we discussed so far. We saw something about sensory physiology, something about energy production, some neuromuscular coordination, autonomic nervous system, some medications related to it, and something about muscles of mastication. Please, please do like and subscribe my channel so that you know it will motivate me to put up more and more videos. Yes.